this almond one is like butter heaven. This Stanley bottle has honestly become my go-to at the gym. This UGC ad was created entirely by AI in under two minutes. And I'm about to show you exactly how I built the workflow that made it. UGC ads used to be incredibly expensive and difficult to make, especially if you had hundreds of products and you wanted to run hundreds of different ad variants. But with image generation tools like Google's new Nano Banana and video generation tools like VO3 Fast, everything has changed. And by the end of this video, you will have a complete automated system to generate your own UGC ads and viral videos. If you're new here, my name is Shup and I build AI and automations to help businesses and professionals save time and make more money. So up until now, placing products into AI generated images was a little difficult. OpenAI's image generator did a pretty decent job, but Google's Gemini 2.5 does a phenomenal job and just blows everyone else out of the water, as you can see from this banner here on their blog post. So it keeps characters consistent, it keeps objects and products consistent, and you can actually edit your images using simple text-based prompts. So the idea is that we generate an image using Nano Banana, then we generate some prompts using Claude, and then we generate the video using VO3. But the real big breakthrough comes when we feed it image context, which happens in this node over here. So instead of just generic prompts, we are actually giving Claude a lot of context as to what's in the initial image, so that it really understands how to generate the prompt that we will then feed into VO3. And when we combine Nano Banana and VO3, that's when things start to get really crazy and lifelike. So let me go ahead and show you how this workflow is set up. And then we'll do a live test run and see the kind of results that it can actually generate. And if you want this workflow, just go ahead and click the link in the description. So this workflow is split into three parts. First, we generate the image. Then we create the video generation prompt. And finally, we will generate and output that video. So everything starts with a Telegram trigger. I've hooked this up to a new Telegram bot that I made. The next step is to use an edit fields node and actually insert your Telegram API key, which you get when you set up the bot. Now, obviously, I'm going to change this once this video goes live. But we need this in order to directly access the image from Telegram servers. So we're going to use an edit fields node to go ahead and create a variable called Telegram token. And, that's and the value of that variable is the API key. Next up, we are going to send a message and wait for a response. So the first step is to send an image to Telegram. So this would be the product or the business that you want to make an ad for. Once you send it the image, the send and wait for response node is going to ask you for a prompt. Thank you for uploading the image. Please provide instructions. What exactly do you want to do with this image? So if you have a product, your prompt would be something like, please generate an image of a person holding this product in XYZ setting. Next, we're going to download that file and get the URL. And then we're going to pass that to Google's Nano Banana. Now I'm accessing Nano Banana through Open Router. And as of this recording, Open Router, uh, Open Router is offering Nano Banana 2.5 Flash for free as a preview. I'm not sure how long this is going to remain free, but while it's free, you should definitely take advantage of it. So I'm making a post request to Open Router. I have my credentials saved. You, uh, Open Router has predefined credentials within N8N. And here is the JSON body. Let me go ahead and make that bigger so you can see what's going on. This is the body. I got this from the Open Router documentation. We have the model. We have the prompt itself. So the prompt is what we got from Telegram. And, and we have some extra constraints as well. Photorealistic for a UGC ad and a square ratio. And we also need to pass in that image URL. So the image URL is api.telegram.org slash file slash bot. And then your API token slash the result.file underscore path, which we will get from the get a file node. Now, Open Router returns the image as base64, which is just a set of characters. But there, there are some extra characters at the beginning that we need to trim. So a code node trims those extra characters and then outputs just the base64 text. Then we have the convert to file node, which will convert the base64 string that, uh, that we got from the code node 
and save it as a PNG image. And we'll give it a file name as well, generated image. And we will send that back to ourselves in Telegram. So that's the first part complete where the initial image has been generated. Next, we'll work on the video generation prompts. And because we need to pass in the new image, we need to get that file that we just sent earlier. And that's just to get the path of the file. Once we get the path, we make another call to Nano Banana, but this time, instead of asking it to generate an image, we are telling it to provide a detailed description of what is in the image, the setting, the subjects, what the subject is doing, holding, etc. And we have the same URL as before, except instead of the initial path, we have the new path from the generated file. Now, this step is what makes this workflow different from any other workflow that you'll find on YouTube, because we are going to feed the results of this analysis into our prompt generation engine. And with that analysis, the prompt generation engine will make sure that the, that the prompt does not contain any instructions that can potentially mess up the video. So this extra guardrail will, will ensure that your final video will require as little editing as possible. So once we have the image analysis, we have another send a message and wait for a response node in Telegram. And this time we're going to ask the user to provide a dialogue idea for the ad. So here we're asking the user, what exactly are they looking for in the ad? So if it's an ad for a water bottle, are they looking for somebody to describe how good the water bottle is? Or if it's an ad for a t-shirt, are we looking for an ad that describes how soft or comfortable the t-shirt is? So we're just giving the AI some kind of context as to what exactly we need to talk about. Because after all, you know your product the best, right? The AI may not understand what the specific features or benefits of your product are. And once you give your instructions, that goes into an LLM chain. I've hooked it up to Anthropic and I'm using Sonnet 4 because I found that an Anthropic happens to be really good at generating prompts. So let me go ahead and show you that uh, the prompt that we have. Here is what I'm looking for. And this is the result from the, uh, from the Telegram form. And here's what's in the initial image, which will be used to generate the video. And this is the output from the image analysis. I've also got a very detailed system prompt where, where we're instructing it to create a two segment video. So that's two segments of eight seconds each for a combined 16 second video. And we're also giving it some very critical constraints so that the prompt doesn't accidentally tell VO3 to do something that's, that's not there, right? Or that's not possible or that would make the, or that would mess up the ad. We're also asking to include cam camera movements when uh, when applicable, and the output the output format is JSON segment one and segment two, and that's it. That's exactly that. That's literally all that we need. Once the prompt is done, that prompt is wrapped up as a single object. So we need to split out those that one object into two objects and start two uh, video generation to requests. Now for video generation, I'm using key.ai. Uh, Key.ai gives you access to VO3 Fast, and VO3 Fast is almost as good as VO3, but it is literally a fraction of the cost. So if we go ahead and click here, I'll show you exactly what it is. So if we check out the pricing, uh, the full quality VO3 is 8 seconds with audio, and that's $2 uh, for one video, and VO3 Fast is just $0.40 cents for one video. So if you're generating a 16 second uh, UGC ad, you're effectively generating the ad for just 80 cents, which is, which is insane when you think about it. If you were to try to hire somebody online uh, or, or use one of those services, you, you would be looking at at least 50, $60 for one UGC ad. Now, obviously, and uh, pun intended, you're comparing apples and bananas, but when you're, when, when you're playing a volume game, 80 cents per UGC ad, times hundreds of ads is definitely gonna is definitely going to give you that competitive advantage. So we send that request to key.ai, then we enter a wait node where we're gonna wait for 60 seconds. Um, and then <clears throat> then we're going to check to see whether the video generation is complete or not. If the video generation is complete, it goes down the success path. If it's still in process, it just loops back around, goes back into the wait node. And if for some reason uh, the video generation failed, we're going to send a message to ourselves saying video generation failed. Now, once the video has succeeded, you'll have two items going down this path. That means two videos. We're going to aggregate both of those items into a single item. 
And I'm using a community node here called MediaFX, which is a wrapper for FFmpeg. So uh, this is a little complex and you'll need to have a local installation or you'll need to have your own, um, you, or you'll need to be running NADN on Docker or some kind of online container to, inst uh, to be able to use this with FFmpeg. But I'm using this because it's free and it's fast. But in case you're using the, uh, if you're if you're using NADM Cloud, um, or you don't want to go through the complexities of installing FFmpeg, then you can use file.ai, and file.ai actually has an endpoint where you can combine multiple videos into one. Obviously, you'll have to load up some money into file.ai, but the video merging is fairly cheap, so you can definitely use that as well. So once the video is merged, the final video is then sent back to us on Telegram to that same bot. So now for the moment of truth. All right, so let's go ahead and share an image of this shirt to the Telegram bot. And that will start the workflow. It'll ask me to provide instructions. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm giving some instructions for how to generate this image. A man wearing this shirt. The man is in his late 20s, has tousled hair and visible stubble for the beard. He's in his garage standing over a woodworking table. Submit. So we're going to grab that file. We are going to upload it to Open Router and Nano Banana to generate the new image. Once that image is generated, we'll convert that image to a file and send it to ourselves. All right, so the image has been generated. Okay, perfect. All right, so it's a pretty decent image generation. Now let's go ahead and provide the dialog idea. I'm going to hit respond. Yes. All right, how comfortable a shirt is and why every woodworker should have one. Let's hit submit. That's going to start the next process. So I'm just going to fast forward the rest of this execution until we get the result. We can see in key AI that the videos are being generated. The workflow is doing its thing behind the scenes. So the video generation is done. We're now merging the video. And once that video is successfully merged, it's, we are going to receive it in Telegram. And I'll show you the final result. You know, I've been wearing this shirt all day in the shop and it still feels incredible. No binding, no restriction when I'm reaching for tools. Seriously, if you're spending hours at the workbench like I do, you need something that moves with you. This flannel is a game changer for any woodworker. All right, so there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and do remember to subscribe for more AI and automation content.